Welcome back. As part of our ongoing investigation, we've set up at our website, KHOU.com, a way for anyone anywhere in Texas to look up the radiation test results for their area's water. But little did we know that it would actually reveal just what the EPA isn't telling you about your drinking water. Here's investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt. You're concerned. I'm alarmed. Brian Ruiz says his life is about another life. His son Braden, oh, five years old. Good job. When Braden was born, it, it was like the world changed. Which is why Ruiz became upset. An array of emotions just came over me. After he checked the raw radiation test results for his water provider at KHOU.com. I became outraged. I was sickened with what I saw. Because those tests seem to show he had far more radiation in his water than the law allows. But what made him really angry? These water quality reports sent every year to his community by his utility company claimed the amount of radiation was actually under the limit. Ruiz was furious. Absolutely, I've been lied to. But it turns out what Municipal Utility District 238 did was perfectly legal. You see, when it comes to radioactive tap water, the national EPA is mainly concerned if the contamination comes from something man-made, like a nuclear power plant. But we've discovered that if the radiation in your tap water comes from certain naturally occurring sources, like some underground minerals, believe it or not, the EPA tells utilities that they don't have to tell you the radiation is in your water. It's not rational. He's Dr. Arjun Makajani, a physicist and former advisor to the EPA on radiation science. He now runs the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research in Washington. The radioactivity is ignored. And you're saying that that idea dates back to the 1950s? Yes. It was the Cold War, and above-ground nuclear testing was a common occurrence. So, Makajani says for years, when it came to your drinking water, radiation from nuclear fallout dominated the concerns of scientists. The problem, says Makajani, is that the EPA ignored other sources of radiation. Where I think the EPA was wrong was in neglecting some natural radioactive materials altogether. For example, the EPA's rule book says that states do not need to test your water for radiation from naturally occurring lead 210. The reason? The EPA told KHOU since the rule covers man-made radionuclides only and with natural uranium that produces those alpha particles we told you about, the EPA lets water providers subtract them out from their test results because they say gross alpha measurements do not include uranium because its radiotoxicity to the bone is insignificant. In other words, the EPA claims that uranium's alpha radiation targets your bones but doesn't really hurt them. Makajani was astonished. That's not correct. This thing, radiotoxicity to the bone is insignificant, is flat wrong. Scientifically. It is scientifically wrong. But they say. I know. To, they tell this me. Is wrong. By Makajani's calculation, natural uranium produces nearly five times the radiation dose to the bone than some man-made elements. And the element led to 10? He says that gives off seven times the dose. And yet, water companies don't even have to test for it. Should I not know how much of that is in my drinking water? I believe you should. But it's not just outdated science that drives the EPA's decisions. Bottom line, you're concerned for the safety of the nation's drinking water. Yes. Take radium-224, another radioactive element utilities don't test for. Why? One reason, the EPA says, doing so could cause many water provider systems to find themselves to be out of compliance with the law. Which brings us back to where we began our broadcast, with those radioactive water pipes in Central Texas. What were you thinking when you heard about that? Well, here we go again. This is the center of the town. Right? You see, Field actually discovered the problem nearly 20 years ago in Midwest town radium sticking to the water system's distribution pipes, creating radon gas that was then carried to local homes. And we proved that in a study we published in the American Journal of Public Health. So Field brought his discovery to the EPA and... They thought that was an isolated incident. And so nothing happened. But truth be told, if this is happening 
in many water distribution systems all across America, nobody really has any idea. No, no. And so the scientist worries. These aren't just statistics. You know, statistics are people with the tears wiped away. It's what they are. And these are real people. The EPA declined doing an on-camera interview with KHOU, but in a written statement, they deferred authority to the TCEQ, who they said was working to address our state's radium issue as quickly as possible and that the health risk of radium-coated plumbing is uncertain and under scientific review. We'll be right back. We're now joined by Dr. Arjun Makhijani, who served under two presidents on the Scientific Advisory Board to the Environmental Protection Agency, where you were on the Radiation Advisory Committee, and you're now the president of the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research in Washington. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Makhijani. Thank you, Mark. How much radiation is safe to consume? There's no safe level of radiation. Period. The end. The end. So. Just in general, in simple terms, what's your message to people who say you don't have to worry about low-dose radiation in drinking water? Well, you know, the, I would say that low, low levels of radiation will cause low levels of risk. That's the best accepted science. We've had repeated studies, repeated reviews. They have all reaffirmed smaller amounts will give you smaller amounts of risk. Proportionately higher amounts will give you a proportionately higher risk. This is the best science that we know. Clearly, top public officials right here in the city of Houston have repeatedly said that the water is safe, using those words. I think that's very misleading because many people or most people when they hear that would believe there is no risk. But I've heard it said that we're surrounded in radiation everywhere yes. we go. The sunlight gives us radiation. If we get on an airplane, we're exposed to radiation. So what does a little bit of radiation in our drinking water really hurt us? We should leave sunshine out of it because uh, visible light is not ionizing radiation. What we're talking about is ionizing radiation. It's a particular kind of radiation that's high energy radiation that can break apart the molecules in your body. I want to get your reaction. We found water pipes themselves becoming so radioactive that metal scrap yards won't take them, they turn them away. When you saw that video, what was your reaction? Frankly, I was appalled. I was appalled that drinking water well above the contaminant limits should have been allowed to continue and that officials apparently have known about this for, for many years. Um, this should have been cleaned up. And if it required public money, it should have been devoted to that to clean it up. At least the public should have been more frankly and openly informed. Now, I understand that they've been putting these me measurements in fine print reports to consumers, but consumers don't normally read those things. When people are warned about drinking water that does violate current EPA standards, in Texas they're told you don't have to switch water supplies, this is not an immediate emergency. Your reaction to that kind of language? Well, you know, obviously, if, if you're in violation by two times, it's not an immediate emergency. But drinking water is consumed every single day for a lifetime. If you stay there, it is going to cause significant increases in cancer risk. If you're 10 times above drinking water standards, um, now you're talking risks that we generally consider to be unacceptable. That's what you're subjecting the general population to. Some people say, I've drank that water my entire life, and right. I don't have cancer. That's right. Now, not everybody is going to get cancer at the levels we're talking about, fortunately. Dr. Makajani, are we making a mountain out of a molehill by talking about radiation in drinking water and doing all of this reporting on this topic? No, I don't think so. I think you're doing a public service. I think the discourse on radiation needs to be more honest and more straightforward. Radiation produces cancer risk, small amounts, small risk, big amounts, big risk. What level shall we set that will give an, a risk that's acceptable? 
Mark, that's where we need an honest, frank, and informed debate. Dr. Arjun Makajani, thank you for joining us. Thank you.